Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Quilter's Apothecary. Today, our tutorial is going to be going over the various cruise and coast modes for the different machines. Now, we're going to be working on the Handy Quilter, which uh, the mode is going to be called your cruise mode. Now, I've done another one of these videos on the Innova machine, which would be called the Start Speed mode. Uh, for the various machines, for example, the A1s are called Cruise Mode. Um, I think the Gamel is called Cruise. It could be Coast. Um, the APQS, I believe it might be Glide. I'm not really quite sure. So the mode itself is a combination of stitch regulator and non-stitch regulator. In other words, you set the bottom speed, and we're going to go over all of that. But so often what happens in classes, and this is one of the questions that I get more than anything, is, Jamie, when do I utilize these special modes on my machine? And a lot of times I'll find that anywhere from 50 to 70% of people in classrooms don't even know that they have these modes and don't know that these modes can really make their quilting absolutely incredible and it'll make their machines move so much smoother depending on the age of the machine. So let me talk a little bit about the whole point of the cruise, the coast modes, and how they originally came to be. So years ago, of course, the original long arm quilting machines just simply had manual. And that was, let's say, for example, the speed setting was from 1 being slowest to 10 being the fastest. You would set your speed at what you want, and then you had to regulate your body movement to the speed that you were moving at. So, and it, and that was pretty easy. I remember my first machine multiple um, decades ago. That's all we had. We didn't have stitch regulators back then. Um, so you got used to it and you would move at a pretty smooth pace and your stitches would look pretty even. And a lot of people don't take their machine off of their stitch regulator mode, which is um, sad because using non-stitch regulator or using the non-stitch regulator mode specifically is actually really comfortable to do and it's pretty quick to get the feel of moving smoothly. So I digress a little bit. Let me go back a little bit. So that was the mode that we had. We simply had manual. So you, ju you just had your speed control, you would set it and you would go. So then what they did is um, stitch regulators came out from the, the few machine companies that we had back then, and stitch regulators simply meant this. You would set your stitch regulator for how many stitches per inch, and then they added to the machine encoders on the carriage as well as the table of the machine to be able to read your movements, and therefore when you slow down and come to a stop, your stitch regulator would slow down and come to a stop. When you speed up and get faster, it would speed up and get faster. So that was how stitch regulators originally worked. Now, they were, they were iffy uh, back in the day. I remember the, the first stitch regulators that came out, they were nice training wheels, but one of the things that we would run into is you would be quilting along, and when you would pop into a point and pop back out, because it's a machine, it takes a split second for it to read the movement. And so what would happen is you'd pop into a point pause, and when you'd pop out, it's like the machine would say, oh, they're moving, go, go. And so we'd end up with a long stitch coming out of a point. And that was absolutely every stitch regulator out there. Um, and that was just the, the name of the beast. And as we got used to what we realized is you would slow down coming out of a point, and so you'd, you'd have to train your muscle memory to do that. And then what happened is a few of the machine companies came up with these different modes. Um, one was cruise, of course, coast. Not a lot of machines did this back in the day. There were only about two or three that did this. Um, and what those modes would be, it was a combination of manual and stitch regulator. And so what you would do is you would set your speed control and then set your stitch regulator that that would be the bottom speed so that when you came to a stop you would set the speed and that's the slowest it would go so if you came to a stop and you had it set again let's say one being the slowest 10 being the fastest then if you set it at three which meant when you slow down to your slowest or stop the needle would still be doing this if you go into a point and set there for a few seconds, your needle would take multiple stitches 
and then give you a knot at the bottom which is why when people are new to using the cruise modes, coast modes, start speed modes, um, they tend to not like it immediately because nobody teaches them how to adjust it based on the work that they're happen they happen to be doing at the time. So that's kind of a quick explanation to what these modes are. Now, so what happened in, I would say, the last seven or eight years is the machine company Stitch Regulators just got to be amazing. I mean, the technology grew. Um, the long-arm companies invested in, in a, a lot in the stitch reg regulator technology. And so even without the coast cruise stitch reg uh, modes, it would be hard, if not impossible, to get a long stitch coming out of the points. So one would say, well, now that the stitch regulators have improved so much, What's the point? Why use them? Well, I'll tell you what the point is and why I still love them and why I wouldn't have a machine that didn't have that mode on it. And that is this. Number one, when you run a machine with the cruise modes, the coast modes, any of the, the start speed modes, and you utilize that, when you're doing regular movement, i.e. all overs, edge to edge, and you bounce into a point and come out, when you have it set at the right speed, it's almost as though that machine is just like a mower that's on self-propelled. It, it runs 10 times smoother than when you just have your regular stitch regulator on. Um, and, and it just feels amazing. Everything moves so much smoother. It doesn't pull out of your hands as much um, as some of the older regular stitch regulators did. So those are the reasons why even today uh, with the amazing stitch regulators we have, using the Coast Cruise start speed modes are absolutely incredible. So I'm going to bring you over to the machine. We're using a handy quilter right now, and I'm going to show you exactly how to use at least the handy quilter um, stitch regulator cruise mode compared to um, the, the regular stitch regulator mode, the precision stitch regulator, as well as the manual and what the benefits are to use those modes. So now you can see the screen that we have up on the handy quilter and we are of course working on the Amara. And so you can see the green is on manual. Now I'm going to go to Stitch Regulator. And you'll notice when I go to Stitch Regulator down below, I've got my stitches per inch. So I'm going to take that down to six stitches. Now I'm going to take it back up to 12, which is kind of my basic where I have it for Stitch Regulator. But let me take that back to manual. Let's do an overview again for those of you that are new to the whole Stitch Regulator, non-Stitch Regulator. So now I have it on manual. It says my speed is 150. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit my start. And so no matter how fast I'm moving, that's as fast as that machine is going to run. Now I'm going to push my plus sign on my handlebar, and that's going to take that up a little faster. And so now if I were working with the non-stitch regulated mode, just regular manual, I would be controlling my movement to keep those stitches regulator. This machine now is not going to slow down or speed up based on my movement. It's going to stay consistent there. And again, I could speed it up as fast as I wanted to go and I could slow it down. So that is the whole idea of manual. Again, you set the speed and I can speed it up here up on the screen and then I could slow it back down. Let me hit that again. I could slow it back down and have it go slower and it takes a little time to figure out what speed works best for you because everybody has a natural um, speed based on their movement. Some people move very quickly so they're going to go a little bit higher on that speed and some people are going to go a little bit slower. So again, that would be your manual mode. Now, let's take that over to Stitch Regulator. So I'm going to hit the R, and you can see that turned green. So now the Stitch Regulator is engaged. And now, again, down below would be my stitches per inch, and I'm going to go to 12 stitches per inch. And I've got it on precision. So right now, this machine is set on precision. Now, this is cruise. 
right there that I just highlighted, and now over here is precision. And precision simply means that it will come to a complete stop. It is not on the cruise mode when I come to a stop. So now when I move and speed up, it will speed up. When I slow down, it will slow down. When I come to a stop, it will come to a stop. And so that's the regular stitch regulator mode. Now, people that are new to rulers, that would be the mode that I would have them be working on if they were working with rulers for the first um, month of working with rulers, because then the machine is going to come to a complete stop. Now, if I were going to use my cruise mode, so now let's go over here, we're going to put it on cruise, and I'm going to take that cruise down to the slowest it'll go, which is... 25. So now when I hit start, even at a stop, do you see how slow that needle is going up and down? So when I come to a complete stop, it's still going to be moving at that pace, which when you're new to rulers, but yet you want to engage the cruise mode, that would not be a bad place to start when using your stitch regulator with the cruise mode. Now, if I were doing an edge-to-edge -edge, though, for example, and that's where I had it set, well that might not be the most comfortable because what will happen is it's not moving fast enough when I bounce into a point to give myself that self-propelled feel like on a mower, a self-propelled push mower to come out. So it's still going to be when you bounce into a point it's still going to, you're going to give the machine a little bit more of a push to pop out. So I might go ahead, go up here, and take that up to 75. Now let's look. So do you see how much faster that is now? So when I come to a stop, it'll still engage my, my um, stitch regulator mode as I speed up, just like before. But when I come to a complete stop, the needle is still going to be moving at that level. Now because I'm pretty seasoned with rulers, 75 is where I tend to work if I'm working with rulers. But again, that's something that I, I do because I, I have a little bit more experience. So now, if I'm doing an edge to edge, that 75 isn't going to be enough for me. So if I were doing a, a swirl design, which we'll do a thread in a moment, that's not going to be fast enough for me to get the benefit of that feel of self-propulsion as I move through there. So what I'm going to do is I tend to take it up to about somewhere between four and 600. Now 600 is the fastest cruise mode that you can go on the handy quilter and 600 is that speed. So that is the, the fastest for the cruise. So when I'm doing now again, if I speed faster, my stitch regulator is going to kick in. But when I slow down, and I come to a stop, that's the slowest. Now, if I were working with the ruler, that would be way too fast. Because when I would come down, stop, let's, for example, come down, and I'll show you this with thread shortly, and come down and stop, that would be still going like this, so it wouldn't give me time to turn my ruler and then start again before I would build up a knot in the corner. Because that's something that you want to be very careful of, is making sure that you have it set at the right speed so that when you pause, it's not taking more than, let's say, three stitches. Um, now, two to three stitches to me is a nice anchor stitch in a corner. That's not going to build a knot, but anything more than that is going to build up a knot. So again, there I am at 600. Now, as I turn that off, Let's say that I'm fairly new to an edge-to-edge, -edge, a swirl, so I might go to 425, and then that's a nice medium speed. So let's get some thread in here, and then let me show you exactly how that works um, when it comes to actual quilting. Okay, so now in this block, I have chalked a rectangle. So we're going to start off with ditch work and how to utilize the cruise mode when I'm doing ditch work. Now you don't have to, and again, if you're new, you wouldn't engage your cruise mode. But once you get more seasoned, I think there are reasons that you would enjoy utilizing the cruise mode as you get more control of your machine. So right now, I actually do not have my cruise mode engaged. So I'm going to engage it just so you see that on the uh, uh, computer screen itself, and now I'm going to disengage it. 
I've got it set at 12 stitches per inch, which is what I normally run it for ditch work. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hit my start. I've locked my stitches. I'm going to follow that ditch right down. I'm going to come to a stop. And when you're new, I just go ahead and hit stop, turn my ruler, line it up. And then again, I'm going to hit my start. I'm going to come over. And then every time I hit stop, I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. And this is typically how new people will work their ditch work. So I'm going to reline that ruler up, check around, make sure that I'm lined up a quarter of an inch away back there. Now I'm always shifting my ruler because I have yet to see a straight ditch in my quilting life. And I'm going to follow that line up, hit stop. Do not be shy about using the stop and start button. There's not a problem with that. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to come over. I'm going to throw in a little extra tip here. When you were on a machine, and let's say this was way back in the back of the throat space, one of the things that I did was I went to one of the, um, the resale shops like uh, Goodwill or any of the other resale shops, and I bought one of those old exercise step aerobic things, and I keep that under the machine so that that way I, when I'm going back and I'm doing ditch work way back here so that I can see over the lip of a ruler because we don't want to have our rulers behind the foot. You can just pull that out and use that, and that's going to make that a lot simpler. Okay, so now change back to the right lane that we're talking about. So now that would be engaging non-cruise mode. So we that would just be your regular stitch regulator engaged and everything's fine. And of course, with the handy quilter, you have beautiful points. We don't have to worry about um, getting our long stitches coming out of points with that. Now, but let me say this, as a seasoned quilter, I'm gonna go over here and I like to run it at about, I'm gonna take this speed, my cruise speed, down to 75, let's go to 50. And I'm gonna hit start. And do you see that's the speed that that's at at 50. So now as a seasoned quilter, or even a, a fairly seasoned quilter, now when I do that, and I follow <laughs> that ditch down to a point, then what'll happen is it'll still go that stitches. That gives me about two anchor stitches while I turn and head out, gives me about two anchor stitches while I turn my ruler and head up. And again, that to me is a very comfortable cruise mode for a new person that's doing ruler work. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, if I were a little more seasoned, then I might wanna take that up to, let's say 75. So now at 75, now when I come down, stop, turn my ruler, that just took two anchor stitches. That's about where I run for regular ditch work. Stop, turn, that took about two anchor stitches. I'm gonna go up, stop, turn, that's gonna go over, and then that would continue. So now, that just helps me. Everything moves just a little bit smoother. Um, I don't have to put so, mo so much momentum into restarting. And so when I'm using doing ruler work, that's how I like to utilize the cruise mode. Now let's talk about doing it with freehand work. So now when I'm doing filler or edge to edge work, I, and let's say that I have it set, I have my cruise mode on now. Um, and actually let me take my cruise mode off. Now I just have my regular stitch regulator on and I'm just gonna do a basic swirl. So I'm gonna come down, swirl out, echo up the tail, come down. Now again, on the newer machines, everything feels very smooth, but I'll tell you what, I am so used to that wonderful feeling of using the cruise mode that I actually like to use it and that's gonna take it up a whole nother notch of how it feels. So now let me take it over into the cruise mode and we have it set at 75. So that means the needle is gonna move about that fast even when I come to a stop. Now because I'm doing filler though, I don't pause that long that that's gonna mean anything to me. So really at this point, it's just like I don't have the cruise mode on which kind of makes it 
invalid to use. It, it kind of cancels itself out because I have it on so slow, um, even though I'm moving at a nice slow pace. So now I'm going to take that cruise mode up to 225. So now that's the speed it's going to be working at. So now, as I move this around, I notice it feels a lot smoother when I pop in and out of those points. Like I said, it's starting to feel a little bit like one of those wonderful self-propelled lawnmowers. It just gives that wonderful feel. I don't have to push or give it an extra shove out of the corner, and that's for any brand of machine because I've run all the brands. And again, right now we're doing this on the um, handy quilters. So now, my normal speed, I'm going to take that up to 500, because when I'm doing a filler normally on a machine, what I'm going to be doing is about 500. So now when I pop into a point and out, and like I said, right now that feels like I have a self-propelled lawnmower. There is no pull. It's nice and smooth. It's that almost wonderful combination of not even having the stitch regulator on. And as I move through, it just feels physically so much more nice and comfortable as I'm working my design. Now, again, if I were one that likes to pause and points and come back out, then I would want to slow that down because I would get a little knot in that point. If I came out, paused for a few minutes, then that's going to take three or four stitches. So again, you have to judge um, what cruise speed you want based on how fast you happen to move. I have quilters that do their edge to edge at this speed, so that would actually be too fast. And then I have some people that do edge to edge work at this crazy speed, and then they'd want to put it on like the 600. Now, I always figure if I'm quilting and I'm going that fast, you know, just because a car can go 200 miles an hour does not mean you want to take a car 200 miles an hour. I like a nice, smooth speed so that my quilting looks lovely. So those are some of the ways that you can use and utilize the stitch regulator compared to the cruise mode compared to the non-stitch regulated, the manual mode on your machines. Okay, so there we have it. I hope now you feel a little more um, informed uh, on how to use those modes um, and you actually do use them because there is such a wonderful benefit to using those particular modes on your machine at different times. So if you like this video, the one thing that I would ask is please go ahead, hit the subscribe button down below, and then also maybe hit the bell button so that that way as we have new videos coming out, you will know about it. We will inform you. So as usual, take care of yourself, take care of each other, be safe, and we will see you down the road.